Hey guys, today I have a little more early access Kerbal Space Program 2 footage to show off, and I wanted to try flying a full Duna mission. My main goal was to build the rocket myself and fly the entire mission there to get a feel for the whole experience. But of course, you can see here I'm starting out in the vehicle assembly building, and the first thing I was going to need was a pod. Now I decided on using this one because it seemed to be most similar to one of the ones in the original game, and the other reason was that it could also fit a parachute on it. Now I was looking at the different parachute options, and originally I was going to go with this drogue chute here, but since Duna already already has such a thin atmosphere, I wanted to have a full normal parachute, and I figured that should be okay. And after slapping that on here, the next thing I need to do is start working on fuel tanks. Now the first one I found here had about the right proportions, but it was a little bit too small, so I instead went with the smaller stubbier tank, and I stacked two of them on top of each other. Now I was considering going for a larger stage here, but since it's just going to be a light lander, I deleted those off, and just went with the two tanks. And of course, next up here, I need to pick an engine. Now I was looking at the different options, but I I kind of want to go for a weird one here and try this radially mounting one. Now this is in the first game and I usually don't use it too much, but here I thought I could also double as landing legs and you can see now I'm starting to put those in place. Now I was struggling a bit to find the symmetry tool and eventually I kind of just gave up and what I decided to do is just slap them on the front. Now at the very least though, I was able to use the projection tool here and very easily line these up. Now I added on a stack decoupler and with that I wanted to add on another tank. Originally I was going to go for another liquid fuel stage, but I thought before for that, maybe a Xenon tank would make a lot more sense. I also kind of wanted to try it out in this game and see how it would look, so you can see now I'm looking it up and I found this tank. Now the biggest one I could find was still just a little bit too small here, so what I decided to do is add on a quad coupler and I stacked on four tanks. Now it would appear that there's still only one Xenon engine at the moment and it looks like it's the same Dawn engine from the first game. At the very least though, I could slap four of those on there and with all that done, I wanted that on an engine plate next to stack on the stage below it. For that though, at first I had to take it off and just put that right in place and I used the move tool here to slightly bring it down to get it out of the way of the engines. With that though, put back on my Xenon tanks and I'm deleting a few of them off. That's because I finally realized what the symmetry tool was and I wanted to replace everything with the symmetric parts. This made things quite a bit easier and once I got those in place here, I wanted to try working on a fairing. Now I didn't really need this, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to mess with and try to encapsulate the entire lander. Now starting out, it is a little bit different than the first game and I touched on this in my first video, but you can see here, now you to manually move around each of these pieces and I can get it to completely cover what I want. Overall though, that was pretty easy and with that, I added on a large battery for my ion engines and I also wanted to add on some solar panels to power them once that battery runs out. Now these looked a little bit different than the first game and I was curious to see how they were going to fold out. With those on there though, that stage is pretty much complete and next up, I added on a large methylox tank for my bottom stage. Now I was looking at different engines here, but I really like the look of this mammoth engine and with that on the bottom, I also started moving around some staging stuff and the way stages delete is a lot easier than the first game, so that was greatly appreciated to see. Now I went back here and turned on the right projection, and after that, I grabbed some radial hard points here, and these I was hoping to attach some boosters to. Now after getting those lined up now, I was looking at my solid fuel boosters, and I ended up finding these mammoth engines. These are some of my favorite boosters in the first game, and you can see now I just slapped four of those on there, and I thought that should do the job. Now I grabbed the nose cone here just to make sure to cover those up, but with all those in place now, it was time to start doing some coloring. Originally, I thought the red and blue would look good, but it was a little bit too harsh, so instead it went for white and blue, which looked a lot better. I didn't just want to leave it at that, though, because I knew you could cover individual parts, so I went for a yellow and blue, and that was going to be for those middle parts. I was hoping this would look good, and I think it sort of did, but at the very least, the paint tool did a pretty good job letting me color everything up here. With all that done, though, I wanted to go to the launch pad here and try giving it a test. Now, this is the first time I ever tried launching anything in the game, and the first thing I did was hit the go button. Now, by doing this, I noticed this had skipped count down, and I wasn't really sure what was happening at first, but once I saw some particle effects on the bottom, that's when I realized that it gives you this nice little cinematic every time you try to launch the rocket. I really enjoyed this effect, but I'm also very glad that it is skippable in time. Launching off the rocket, though, you can see that my solid rocket boosters were bending quite badly into the fuel tanks. Now, I wasn't super happy to see that, because I really thought the radial decoupler should have been able to hold on to everything, but at the very least here, I figured I'd let the flight go on and check out the Kerbal Space Center. Now, looking down, I can see the launch pad below me, and looking around, I can also see all the other launch pads and some of the facilities off to the left here. One thing I really like about the new Kerbal Space Center is you can do some really nice plane plates around here because there's just so much room to mess with. Now, reverting to the vehicle assembly building, the first thing I wanted to do is try using some struts and 
and holding everything together a bit better. Now I ended up picking the stretch tool here, and you see in the very top of the booster, I just used one to hold it to the main tank. It was also around this time though, I noticed that one of these shrouds was for some reason acting like a cone instead of a cylinder. I really wasn't sure what was causing it to do that, but I wanted to try removing some parts here and seeing if I could get it to undo that. That's when I ran into a bug though, where nothing seemed to reattach to itself properly, and after seeing that, just make sure to revert here and load up the rocket again. This seemed to fix the problem, so at least that seemed to be ready to go, and of course, one thing I wanted to do was look at the trip planner. This was very interesting, and you can see you can select any target you want, and it shows you how much Delta V it's going to take. This was super helpful, and I was actually really happy to see this is now integrated right into the game. Checking it, it actually was saying I was going to be a little low on fuel, but I think the problem is just that my staging was set wrong, so overall, my rocket was mostly good to go. To give it a little bit more power, though, I wanted to add on four more solid rocket fuel boosters, and I figured that should definitely get me out of the atmosphere. While they're ready to go, though, I went to the launch pad, and that's what I had a very concerning experience. It appears like the Kraken has come back and seemed to rip my rocket apart. To hopefully mitigate that, I deleted off those boosters I added, and instead of having four, I have six copies of the same booster now. But on the launch pad now, I went for a quick launch, and things were going a lot better than before. Nothing seemed to be obviously bending, and I seemed to be staying on target. Now, I took a quick look at the map view, which wasn't very interesting in the moment, so I went back to the flight view here and just kept burning up. Now, I really like the look of going through the clouds here, and after punching through those, I started doing my gravity turn. It might have been a bit sued here, but I had so much extra fuel anyway, I wasn't too concerned about efficiency. Now, I also took a quick second here to look at the plumes coming off the solid rocket fuel boosters. These looked absolutely amazing, and I love that the further you go up, the more they expand out and the weirder effects you start to get on them. After that, though, it just felt like a pretty standard launch procedure, right up until I noticed that the nose cone was bobbing back and forth kind of a lot. Now, relatively quickly here, I got my apoapsis above 70,000 meters, which means I'm gonna be out of the atmosphere. Around the time that that happened, my solid rocket fuel boosters finally ran out, and after that, I decoupled them, and that seemed to go perfectly smoothly. I was able to slowly coast away from them, and with that, I just kept continuing on the flight. Now, I could have just kept burning and fully escaped Kerbin to get to Duna, but I actually decided to go for an orbit first. That was for two reasons. The first one was that I just wanted to make sure everything was going to be in order, but the second one is I wanted to get some cool shots panning around Kerbin, and I knew that would look really good the closer I was to the surface. But still, after not too long, I ended up refiring off my engines here and turning prograde. Now, while I was extending that out, I tried messing around with the Epoapsis node, but I was having a bit of trouble trouble. I kept trying to right-click on it to get it to persist, and while it did do it sometimes, it seemed to be a little finicky at the moment. That honestly wasn't too big of a deal, though, and I was just really happy to take in the graphics right now. This is where I started to run into some issues, though, and trying to burn here, my rocket was turning quite a bit, even though I was telling it to stay prograde. Now, also, since I was out of the atmosphere, I wanted to jettison off the fairing, but instead of coming off in sheets, it just came off as one dome and actually separated off my lander entirely. These two problems were pretty much unrecoverable, so what I decided to do here is load up one of my saves and try again. This time, though, I still had the same stability problems, and I wasn't really too happy to see that. Now, I'm not really sure if reaction wheels were nerfed a lot in this game, or if there's something else going on with my rocket, but it really feels like if I built this rocket in KSP-1, it should have just worked. To get that extra stability, though, I went to the vehicle assembly building and added on a couple of reaction wheels. You can see after stacking those in place here, I put back on the engine and pretty much just went straight back to the launch pad. The most notable change here was one once my solid rocket fuel boosters ran out, I actually turned on my main engine to push away from those tanks. And skipping ahead a bit, I ended up turning on my solar panels here and seeing how they looked extended. One thing I noticed is that they take a long time to extend in this game, and that footage was sped up quite a bit. Once I had these out though, the extra reaction wheels were definitely doing their job, and quite easily here, I managed to get a periapsis. Now of course, I was going to need to get this over 70,000 meters, and pretty easily here you can see I did that, and with this, I finally have my first orbit. And now, of course, once I saw that, I wanted to go into map view here and check out how it looked. First thing I noticed here is that looking around at curb, and you get the nice sphere of influence bubble, and I zoomed out here and tried to set my target as Duna. Now, I was having quite a bit of trouble here, and for whatever reason, it seemed to constantly want to set the target as Ike instead of Duna. Now, it was easy enough, though, to set my focus on Ike, and once I did that, I was able to zoom in and then set my target as Duna. Now, of course, once I did this, I was going to need to get a launch window, and for that, I was going to need to do a 
little bit of time warping. Unfortunately, though, getting this close to the surface, it seems to limit your time warp a lot here, and I knew it was going to need to go up a lot higher if I wanted to make this process any faster. I did take the opportunity now, though, to warp around Kerbin, and especially with the sun setting over the horizon there, that was just amazing. Once I was done messing around, though, I set a maneuver node, and after that, I wanted to try extending out my orbit. I was thinking of being somewhere around 300, 500,000 meters, and you can see now it created roughly a circle to make that work. Now, I ended up manually warping ahead to try to get to my maneuver node, but I accidentally overshot it here. Now, I figured that I could just use this button to warp to maneuver, but being this close to the surface, it doesn't really seem to let you. Now, I just decided to manually warp over there, which wasn't really too big of a deal, and you can see once I got there, I started to do my burn. After forgetting to turn on SAS at first and kind of going out of control, I did end up correcting that and setting myself out quite a bit more. And checking the map view here, I got myself to around 500,000 meters, and I was hoping that was going to be high enough that the time warp was going to let me go fast enough. So I warped up to the epoapsis here, and you can see now I'm burning prograde again to try to extend out my periapsis. This as well, I was going for around 300, 500,000 meters, and with this, I got my 45 degree angle between Duna and Kerbin, meaning I have my transfer window. Now with that set, I went here, started to burn, and extended my orbit away from Kerbin. Now I didn't quite get all the way out to Duna, and I actually decided to stop before I fully got out, because my angle was a little bit messed up. Next though, I went ahead and time warped to fully escape Kerbin. Now you can see that being done here in the map view, and and with that done, now it's just time to get my maneuver set so I'll be in contact with Duna. Now at first here, I just extended out the prograde marker, and you can see, I started to get some notes here telling me I was gonna encounter Duna. These were labeled 1A, 1B, and 2B, and at first, I didn't really know what these were. Now it appears that these are actually the closest approach icons, and I try moving around my maneuver node to see if I get them to be any closer. Now I was actually having quite a bit of trouble trying to make these all line up properly, and I think that was mainly just my inexperience with using the system. This was was definitely an extremely inefficient burn, but fortunately I brought way more fuel than I was gonna need, and you can see now, I finally got them to line up on top of each other, and got myself my encounter. Zooming in on Duna here, you can see the two nodes where I'm gonna be entering and exiting the sphere of influence. Apparently it's a bug that there's no actual line that's showing you the path I'm gonna traverse, but at the very least, I was gonna have an encounter, so I did a quick burn here to just solidify that maneuver that I made. Unfortunately, halfway through this burn, I ran out of fuel, and I was gonna need to switch to my ion engine. It was around now, things were getting very bad for me, because while I did deploy off that fairing fine, for some reason, it seems like engine plates aren't able to decouple things below them anymore, and I could not detach the bottom fuel tank to let those engines actually burn. I could see a little blue glow from the bottom, so the engines were definitely on, but since they were right up against the engine below them, they just weren't doing anything. Now, ordinarily, I may have just done a relaunch for this, but since I didn't have any time, what I did here is actually decoupled my lander right off, and I realized I hadn't enough fuel, it could pretty comfortably land at this point. So after setting that off here, I finished up that maneuver and actually got that encounter. With that done, I zoomed in on Duna here, and I could see that it looked really good. I was excited to see this up close now, and with everything ready to go, I just did a quick time warp to get myself way closer to Duna. Unfortunately, I got a little too close, because I actually got way in the sphere of influence and blew past Duna. It was at this time, I did a quick reload just to undo that mistake, but that's when I ran into a bug, and it's the reason this screen is currently blurred. For whatever reason, I had a random rock constantly spawning in me for like the next 10 minutes, and it was causing massive parts of my rocket to blow off. Now, like I said in my previous video, the reason that it's blurred is that the developers have told me it's an accidental asset that I shouldn't share, so I'm not gonna do that, but even going to the main menu screen, it was still there. Now, it took a full reset of the game before it finally went away, but at least once I did this, everything seemed to be perfectly in order, and I was ready to enter Duna once again. Now, I made a very short maneuver note here, and this just to get me right into Duna's atmosphere. You can see now I'm at 55,000 meters, and pushing it a little bit closer, I got into 33,000 meters. That I thought was going to be a pretty good depth to dip into, and of course, with that path set, I ended up ripping ahead here right into the atmosphere. Now, I just did a quick retrograde burn here to get myself right around Duda and make sure I was definitely to fall in. Though I was thinking a little bit further ahead, I probably would have tried landing during day, but I wasn't, so yeah, it's footage is going to be a little bit dark. Now, we'll try brightening this up for you guys, which should work pretty well, but I did have quite a bit of trouble seeing what I was doing. At least the first stage is pretty much just a free fall, and there's really nothing for me to do at all. The only time I wanted to take control is when I started to get kind of out of control here, and that's when I burned off my engines to try to right myself. Now, I used this to get myself pointing forward, but it was not too much longer that the parachute finally deployed, and with this, I was gonna be able to keep myself pointing in the right direction. Now, 
I actually really like this little jittering effect the parachute has when it's not fully deployed. I just think it's really cute. With this at least semi-deployed now, though, it's keeping me pretty straight, and of course, with it fully deployed here, I could pretty much just do nothing right up until I got to the surface. Due to this atmosphere is still pretty thin, so the parachute isn't gonna fully slow me down, and I will need some help from the engines. This was where I started running into some problems, though, because I was just trying to use maximum power on the engine to slow myself down, and I messed this up at the last second and accidentally burned up a little too high. This may have been recoverable if I didn't do it a second time. At this point, slowing myself down was not very easy, and I bumped into the surface in an awkward way, and this was pretty much over for this attempt. Now, I tried loading save to try again here, but that's when I noticed my parachute was just gone. It says it's been deployed already, which I guess is technically correct, but I was a little upset that it wasn't there, and this messed up my attempt quite a bit. Attempt 3 also didn't go very well, because I didn't realize how much speed I was going to need to kill. On this last attempt here, though, I gave it one last good try, and this time you see I'm going quite a bit slower. Fortunately, even though I was landing on a hill, my engines were able to keep myself up, and I actually did manage to land it. Now, right after that, I ended up warping till day, and with this, I wanted to EVA Bob here and try walking around on Duna. Now, look at the little animations that the Kerbals have the ladders, though, even though he kind of was just standing on the ladder at the end here. But otherwise, these animations are quite good, and especially running around the jetpack is just kind of funny. Now, while I'm exploring the surface a bit here, I wanted to get some quick, mostly unrehearsed thoughts and just kind of tell you what I think about the game. Now, I did this in my last video, kind of in a more formal way, but just talking informally now as things show up, especially here, you can see these texture problems. I'm not really sure what's up with that, and it seemed to extend to most of the surface. You notice anywhere I land, I'm not really standing exactly on the ground. Now, one thing I did want to touch on is that a lot of people in the comments of my last video were saying that their computers were never going to be able to run this at all, and that the specs were way too high, and to some extent, I agree with that. Now, of course, I haven't been able to try this outside of this computer, it's running 4080, but in all honesty, in my completely uneducated opinion, I really don't think it's going to be that bad. It seems like a lot of performance issues are related to the engines at the moment, and the way that they cross-feed from fuel tanks, so I feel like that's a very fixable problem. Of course, there are a ton of other things I'm sure that need to be optimized, but the thing is, the developers have already picked out these things, so the fact that they already have them on their radar tells me there's a good chance they'd be able to fix them. You'll also probably notice I'm flying around this Kerbal, man does he have strong legs. For whatever reason, it seems like they just can't fall over anymore, and they seem to be ridiculously strong. But guys, this is gonna be my final early video for Kerbal Space Program 2, and my next one I'm expecting to be a few days after it releases. Now, definitely make sure to subscribe if you want to catch more content like this. If you have any other questions or comments or any other mission suggestions, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. And otherwise, until next time.